A very good evening aspirants welcome to Hindu newspaper analysis brought to you by Shankar Ayes Academy for the date 11th of October 2022 before getting into the article discussions aspirants i have an announcement for you Shankar Ayes Academy is bringing to your attention that a new batch in our prelims test series is starting this month yes the admissions for this new pre storming batch is open now The orientation for the same has started on 9th October 2022 and the test will commence in 3 days that is on 15th October 2022 see this batch will consist of 66 tests and these tests will be conducted in both offline and online mode the test discussion classes will also be provided so hurry and register to use the most reliable prelims test series Now with this note let us get into the daily news analysis Displayed here are the list of articles that we are going to discuss today without any delay let's get into the article discussion Today we are going to start our discussion with this article it talks about SCO's regional anti terrorist structure which is shortly referred as rats and it also talks about joint anti terror exercise which is shortly referred as jait see this year india's elite counter terrorism unit which is nothing but the national security guard is hosting the multinational joint anti terror exercise and it is named as manesar anti terror 2002 at the nsg's manesar unit which is in haryana see the news is that pakistan is going to take part in the closing ceremony of the exercise on october 13 and also note that in the year 2021 the indian delegation had participated in the closing ceremony of jade 2021 which was hosted by pakistan and this is the overall essence of the news article given here in this context let's learn about the regional anti terrorist structure and also we are going to learn about the joint anti terror exercise in detail see these structures and exercises they are coming under shanghai cooperation organization and earlier we have covered elaborately about the seo in our news analysis dated 10th september 2022 so go and watch it now in this discussion we are going to start with rats which is the regional anti terrorist structure see rats is a permanent body of the seo and it is headquartered in tashkent uzbekistan before seeing about the functions of this permanent body we are going to see how it is governed note that rats is governed by the rats council and it is the superior decision making body and rats also have an executive committee which functions under the supervision of rats council So rats is a permanent body it is governed by the rats council so rats council is above rats now rats it has an executive committee which functions under the supervision of rats council see the executive director he is only the chief administrative officer of the rats executive committee and know that he is appointed by the heads of the state council of seo for a period of 3 years Now if you go and watch the 10th September 2022 analysis you will know who are all the heads of state council of SCO Now coming back to this discussion know that India assumed the chairmanship of the council of SCO rats in October 2021 and that is why it is hosting this exercise now now as i promised earlier we are going to see the function tasks and duties of the regional anti terrorist structure which is rats see rats it is intended to facilitate coordination and interaction between competent authorities of the seo member states and why it is intended to facilitate coordination this is done in the fight against all forms of terrorism extremism separatism at the regional and global levels now secondly rats also provide assistance in preparation and conduct of search operations and other activities in the field of fighting terrorism separatism and extremism and finally it also helps in preparation and holding of scientific conferences and workshops and assistance in sharing experience in the field of fighting terrorism separatism and extremism see you can easily remember the tasks and duties of rats why is this because the name itself reveals the functions of rats what is the name it is the regional anti terrorist structure so all of its functions will be based on fighting against terrorism 
The first one is to facilitate coordination interaction against all forms of terrorism, extremism, separatism. The second one is to prepare and conduct search operations. And the third one is preparation and holding of scientific conferences and workshops and assistance in sharing experience in the field of terrorism. Now this is all about the rats. As the second part, we are going to talk about the joint anti-terror exercise. See, it is an annual counter-terrorist exercise held within the framework of SEO rats. As we discussed earlier, this year India is hosting the exercise. Now what is the main objective of this exercise? See, the exercise helps to build synergy between the counter-terrorism forces of the SEO rats member countries. And why is this done? This is to enhance the capabilities for conducting anti-terrorist operations and countering other security threats collectively. So it is nothing but a collective exercise by all the member states of the SEO rats. Now that's all about this article discussion. In this discussion, we saw about SEO's regional anti-terrorist structure and joint anti-terror exercise. Now with these points in mind, let us move on to the next article discussion. Next, we are going to take this editorial article for our discussion. See, this article talks about the Russia's continued open resistance of international laws. So, in this particular article discussion, let us understand why the authors say that Russia is resisting the international laws and we shall also see some of the important points mentioned in the news article. But before that, the syllabus relevant to the article is highlighted here for your reference. Please go through it. Now let us begin with the reasons for the view that Russia is resisting international law. Firstly, you should know that in March 2022 itself, 141 countries came together in the United Nations General Assembly. And they all adopted a resolution demanding the withdrawal of Russia from Ukraine immediately. But Russia did not respond to that. And the evidence for that is the continued illegal military attacks against Kyiv even today. Here you might say, see the resolutions by UNGA are not binding, right? Yeah, it is very true. Russia is not bound to act according to the resolution of United Nations General Assembly. But the decisions by the International Court of Justice are binding, right? See, as soon as the Russia-Ukraine war began, Ukraine petitioned the International Court of Justice to initiate proceedings against the Russian Federation. In response to that, the International Court of Justice issued an interim order in March itself. And the order states Russia to immediately cease military actions in Ukraine. But Russia has not complied with this order as well. And in addition to this, Russian troops in Ukraine have been accused of indulging in war crimes under the international humanitarian law. Take a quick pause here and think about war crime. What all comes to your mind? See, whenever you come across the word war crime, you have to remember two conventions. One is Hague Convention, and the other one is Geneva Convention. But remember, there is no single document in the international law that codifies all war crimes. And the lists of the war crimes can be found in both international humanitarian law and international criminal law treaties. Adding to this, the war crimes can also be found in the international customary law. So like we saw before, there is no one single document. War crimes are found in all of these laws. Now let us see how the International Criminal Court defines war crime. See, according to Article 8 of the Statute of International Criminal Court, war crime includes grave breaches of Geneva Conventions of 12th August 1949. So, what are all the situations that are considered to be breaches of Geneva Conventions? It involves willful killing, torture or inhuman treatment, including biological experiments, or willfully causing great suffering or serious injury to body or health. And apart from this, unlawful destruction and appropriation of property, unlawful deportation or transfer or unlawful detention or taking of hostages against the will of any person or property which are protected under the provisions of the relevant Geneva Convention. Now all these acts, they are considered to be war crimes. And then other severe violations of the international armed conflict laws and customs within the established framework of international laws also comes under war crimes. See, in simple words, it says that violating international armed conflict law or customs, which are within the framework of international law, they are all considered to be war crimes. 
So this is about the definition of war crime. So like I said before, whenever you think about war crime, you have to remember Hague Convention, Geneva Convention and also remember that war crimes can be found in international humanitarian law, criminal law, customary law. And we also saw about the International Criminal Court definition of war crime. Now with this information, let us see the reasons for the view that Russia is indulging in war crimes. The first reason is the recent annexation of Donetsk, Luhansk, Zaporizhia and Kherson. See, these are the four regions that are an integral part of Ukraine. So to portray that the annexation is lawful, Mr. Putin invoked Article 51 of the UN Charter. See, this article provides for the self-defense against an armed attack. That is, whenever there is an armed attack against any member of the United Nations, then that member country has the inherent right of individual as well as collective self-defense. So, in simple words, Article 51 of the UN Charter says that if someone attacks you, you can retaliate for self-defense. So, Russia is saying that it attacked Ukraine for self-defense. See, if you are attacking someone for self-defense, then you should have faced an aggression before, right? Did Ukraine attack Russia? No. So, there is no evidence that Ukraine has attacked Russia and that is why Russia is retaliating for self-defense. And if this context is false in the first place, then Russia attacking Ukraine and annexing the four regions which are integral part of the Ukraine is seen as war crime. See, when we saw the definition of war crime, we saw that unlawful destruction and appropriation of property is considered to be a war crime. So, when there is no evidence that Ukraine attacked Russia in the first place, then the annexation of four regions by Russia is considered as a war crime. Now, secondly, while announcing the annexations, Mr. Putin referred to Article 1 of the UN Charter. See, this article says that member countries can act in accordance to the self-determination of people in that region. So, by quoting this, Mr. Putin simply said that it is the people of these annexed regions who have decided to join Russia through referendums. And they have done this by their self-determination. But remember, this right has to be read with Article 2 of the UN Charter. And this Article 2 of the UN Charter is saying that principle of non-intervention is one of the seven core principles of UN. That is, even if it is the decision of the people to join Russia, that decision has to be taken by people without any interference. But in this case, it is extremely doubtful whether the referendums constitute a genuine expression of the popular will or it is because of fear. So, when you think in every possible angle, the annexation is illegal and unlawful because the actual principle of self-determination should be understood in the context of decolonization. It does not mean that you can simply annex any territory and tell that it is on the pretext of self-determination. It should be the decision of the people or it should be the genuine expression of popular will. You cannot create fear and say that people have made this decision out of their self-determination. And this is the second reason why Russia is considered to be indulging in war crimes. This comes under many of the definitions of war crimes. It includes willfully causing great suffering or taking of hostages of persons or property, unlawful detention, etc. Now, the third and final reason is Mr. Putin's hint on using nuclear weapons in the ongoing war. Here, the issue is that neither Russia nor Ukraine has signed the treaty on prohibition of nuclear weapons. So, the possibility of a disastrous nuclear conflict remains in the background. And this threat of using nuclear weapons by Mr. Putin comes under willful killing, torture, inhuman treatment, willfully causing serious injury to body or health. So, this is also considered to be a war crime. So, these are the three reasons why the author is saying that Russia would have committed war crimes. Now, here comes the question of way forward. What can be done? See, in the case of nuclear attacks, the UN Charter is helpful to understand the legality of these nuclear threats. Just now, I said that the Charter provides the right of individual as well as the collective defense, right? That is, if Russia launches a nuclear attack, not only Ukraine, but also its allies can launch a counter-attack on Russia under collective self-defense. 
so the author advises that this collective self defense should be done since there is no other way and secondly whenever international law is violated the necessity to clarify its standard gains priority so international laws should be strengthened and it's following by the member states and it should be ensured that the member states are following the international law see at last what the authors are trying to say is that we should not end up on the wrong side of the history now that's all about this lead editorial article today in this article discussion we saw about why russia is resisting international laws or the resolutions of unga the order of the international court of justice and after that we saw about war crimes hague and geneva conventions and we saw the definition of war crime as per the international criminal court and finally we ended our discussion by seeing some of the reasons why there is an image that russia is indulging in war crimes now with these points in mind let us move on to the next article discussion now let us take this next news article for our discussion this article speaks about the nobel prize in economics for the year 2022 so in this particular article discussion we are going to see about the awardees in the field of economics and also their works See the Nobel Memorial Prize in Economic Sciences is officially known as this various Riksbank Prize in Economic Sciences. See it is an award given in the memory of Alfred Nobel. It is being funded by Sveriges Riksbank which is the central bank of Sweden and this award is annually awarded by the Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences to the researchers in the field of economic sciences. See each recipient receives a medal, a diploma and also monetary award. Now with this basic information let us see about the 2022 awardees. See the Nobel Memorial Prize in Economic Sciences for the year 2022 was awarded to three American economists namely Ben S Bernanke, Douglas W Diamond and Philip H Dibwick. They got awards for significantly improving the concept which helps us in understanding the role of banks in the economy particularly during the financial crisis. So this is about the information about awardees and their work for which they got the Nobel prize. Now we are going to see a little bit more about the works of the awardees. First of all let us start with the Bernan case work. See the award is given to him mainly because of his work that was published in the year 1983. See this work analyzed the great depression of 1930s. See between January 1930 and March 1933 US industrial production fell drastically and the unemployment rate also rose to 25%. and some of the other countries like great britain germany and australia had also faced the consequences of financial crisis and owing to this reason everywhere banks had collapsed and the people were forced to leave their homes and also widespread starvation occurred even in relatively rich countries see at that time the bank failures they were seen as a consequence of the financial crisis But later Bernanke's work of 1983 proved that it was the bank failures which caused the financial crisis and not the vice versa and he proved this using a combination of historical sources and statistical methods and apart from this Bernanke zeroed in on bank runs as the key reason for turning a normal recession into the greatest economic crisis in modern history See bank runs it is a situation which happens when depositors become worried about the bank survival and they rush to withdraw their savings and if a large number of people do this simultaneously then the bank reserves cannot cover all the withdrawals and it is driven to bankruptcy and because of this bank runs only the recession of 1929 had turned into a full fledged banking crisis by the year 1930 This is because by the time we enter 1930 half of the banks went bankrupt and Bernanke proved that this is because of the bank runs and he also said that the deposit insurance provisions see it is nothing but a certain amount of one's deposit in a bank is insured and that is what is called as deposit insurance provisions he said that it is a critical tool towards building trust and preventing bank runs 
So Bernanke's views on bank runs and the causes of the financial crisis are conventional wisdom and they are backed by the empirical studies also. Now moving on to see about the works of the Douglas Diamond and Philip Dibwig. See they also got an award for their research paper that was published in the year 1983. See the research paper showed that there are fundamental conflicts between the needs of savers and borrowers. See here savers are those who save money and borrowers are those who borrow money or take money as loans. So what do savers do? Savers always save their money and they always want access to at least some part of their savings for unexpected use. Say like a medical emergency. So what does this mean? They want the ability to pull out the money whenever they need it. And this is the intention of the savers. But borrowers, why do they borrow money? Why do they take loan? See, they are taking loan for investing in something, right? Such as building a house, investing in a business, etc. And what happens in these situation? See, savers they want the money whenever they need it. But borrowers they cannot return the money in the short term. Once they gain profit from the investments they made, then only they can return the money. So this is what is the conflict between the needs of the savers and the borrowers. And this was analyzed in the research paper that was published in 1983 by Douglas Diamond and Philip Dibwig. So the research paper said that there is always this mismatch between the savers and the borrowers. See savers they expect the availability of liquidity but borrowers cannot function if the money is demanded back at a short notice so how this mismatch is resolved again in an article from 1983 diamond and dibwig developed a theoretical model that explains how banks create liquidity for savers while borrowers can access long term financing See they also explained that banks were able to resolve this conflict through the process of maturity transformation. See banks assets they have long maturity because it promises the borrowers that they will not need to pay back their loans early. On the other hand banks liabilities have short maturity. What is banks liabilities? It is nothing but the deposits made by the depositors. It has short maturity because depositors can access their money whenever they want. So what is the bank doing here? It is acting as an intermediary that transforms the assets with long maturity into the bank's accounts with short maturity. So this is usually called as maturity transformation and it is explained in the article from 1983. and for this work only dibwig and diamond have been recognized and awarded the nobel prize for economics see all three economists their work has been very crucial to subsequent research that has enhanced our understanding of banks banks regulation banking crisis and how financial crisis should be managed so that's all about this article discussion in this discussion we saw about the nobel memorial prize for economic sciences We saw about the awardees and we saw about the work for which Nobel Prize was given. Now, with these key takeaway points, let us move on to the next article discussion. Now, let us take this final article for our discussion. This article speaks about liquefied compressed natural gas. See, yesterday, Tamil Nadu CM has inaugurated liquefied compressed natural gas station in Rani Pet district of Tamil Nadu. Note that this station was the first of its kind in Tamil Nadu, and it will benefit over thirty thousand households and three hundred and twenty-five industrial and commercial establishments across three northern districts of Tamil Nadu. See, this is the essence of the news article given here. So, what is useful for us regarding examination in this article? It is about the natural gas. So, we are going to concentrate on that only. In this context, let's learn about natural gas and the two forms of natural gas, which is nothing but compressed natural gas and liquefied natural gas. See, first of all, natural gas is an odorless gaseous mixture of hydrocarbons, which is predominantly made up of methane. Chemically, it is represented as CH4. See, natural gas is found with petroleum deposits and is released when crude oil is brought to the surface. So now you know how natural gas is obtained. 
See, natural gas, it is an important clean energy resource with diverse uses. It is used as a fuel in power sector to generate electricity. Then it is used for heating purposes in industries. And it is used as a raw material in chemical, petrochemical and fertilizer industries. Apart from this, they are also used as transport fuel and as cooking fuel also. See, globally, United States of America, Russia, Iran, Qatar, China, Canada and Australia, they are the major producers of natural gas. Now, coming to India-specific information, major natural gas reserves are located in Mumbai High, Krishna Godavari Basin, Kambay Basin, Tripura and Assam. So, this is about the basics of natural gas. Now, let us see about the two forms of natural gas, which is the compressed natural gas, CNG, and the liquefied natural gas, LNG. See, compressed natural gas is actually a compressed pure methane gas and it is used to create clean fuel. See, note that CNG is non-pollutant and almost clean when it is released to atmosphere. And because of these characteristics of compressed natural gas, it is also known as clean fuel. See, the sources of the compressed natural gas are coal bed methane wells and natural gas wells. As the name suggests, compressed natural gas is made by compressing the natural gas which is mainly composed of methane. And this natural gas is compressed to less than 1% of the volume it occupies at standard atmospheric pressure. So because of this, CNG that is the compressed natural gas is lighter than air. So in any case of leakage of the compressed natural gas, it quickly disperses in the air and it poses no risk at all. And this is about the compressed natural gas. Now coming to the liquefied natural gas which is LNG. See it is a natural gas which is in liquid state. And that is why it is called as liquefied natural gas. Here the natural gas is cooled to an extreme temperature to become a clear and non-toxic liquid. See to convert the substance to LNG, the materials that have the property of freezing such as water, carbon dioxide, heavier hydrocarbons, they are removed. See this is done so that the natural gas can be cooled to turn into a liquid. If these elements are present then it cannot be transformed into liquid state. And because of these only, water, carbon dioxide and heavier hydrocarbons are removed before turning the substance into liquefied natural gas. So in this liquefied form, LNG becomes about 600 times smaller than its original volume. And this condition makes LNG ideal for transporting and storing. And this is about the liquefied natural gas. Now coming to the term liquefied compressed natural gas. See, this is only mentioned in the news article. You may get confused here. So far, we saw that liquefied natural gas is one form and compressed natural gas is another form. But now it is combined and given as one term. See, don't get confused. Liquefied compressed natural gas is a compressed natural gas that is converted to liquid form. And it is done by chilling process. See, liquefied natural gas is natural gas converted to liquid. But liquefied compressed natural gas is CNG converted to liquid form. And this process is known as liquefaction. This process is done for the purpose of safe storage and easy transportation. Now that's all about this news article discussion. In this discussion, we saw about the basic facts about natural gas. We saw two forms of natural gas and we also saw about the liquefied compressed natural gas. Now with these points in mind, let us move on to the next part of the discussion that is the practice prelims question discussion. Today we have three prelims questions. I'll solve two of them and one of them is a quiz question for you. Now let us take this first question for a discussion. Consider the following statements with respect to Shanghai Cooperation Organization. Statement 1. It is a permanent intergovernmental organization. See, it is a very simple statement and this statement is correct. See, Shanghai Cooperation Organization is a Eurasian political, economic and security organization and it is a permanent international intergovernmental organization. Now coming to statement 2, Afghanistan, Belarus, Iran, Mongolia are the permanent members of the organization. See, this second statement is incorrect. We have seen the member states of SCO so many times. It comprises of eight member states. They include India, China, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Pakistan, Russia, Tajikistan and Uzbekistan. 
and note that Afghanistan, Belarus, Iran and Mongolia are the observer states and they are not members. But now, in the latest Shanghai Cooperation Organization Summit, measures have been taken to include Iran as the member state. Now coming to statement 3, India is the founding member of the organization. See, this statement is incorrect because India and Pakistan joined the organization on 9th June 2017. So, they are not founding members. So, what is the correct answer to this question? We saw that statement 2 and statement 3 are incorrect statements. So, the correct answer is option A, one only. Now, moving on to the second question. Consider the following statements regarding non-banking financial companies. Statement 1, they are incorporated under Banking Regulation Act 1949. The statement is incorrect. Why? See, non-banking financial companies, they were incorporated under Companies Act of 1956. And the scheduled commercial banks only were incorporated under Banking Regulation Act of 1949. So, statement 1 is incorrect. Now, statement 2, unlike scheduled commercial banks, NBFCs cannot accept demand deposits. This statement is correct. They cannot accept demand deposits, but they can accept time deposits such as fixed deposits. Now, coming to statement 3, deposit insurance facility provided by deposit insurance and credit guarantee corporation is not available to the depositors of NBFCs. See, this statement is also correct. So, what is the correct answer to this question? We saw that statement 1 is incorrect and statement 2 and 3 are correct. So, the correct answer to this question is option B, 2 and 3 only. Now see the last question, it is the quiz question for you. Read the question carefully, think about it and post your answer in the comment section. Aspirants, I have displayed a main question here for your practice. So if you are interested, write your answer and post in the comment section. If you have any queries related to the articles that we discussed today, post that also in the comment section. Now with this we have come to the end of the video. If you like the video, like, share and comment and do subscribe to Shankar A's Academy's YouTube channel for further updates. Thank you.